In this video we're going to be modifying this trap so that way when a creature enters it and triggers the pressure plate, the trap automatically turns on and seals itself and it doesn't turn off until we manually decide that we want it off. <laughs> this is called the Newton's Cradle Switch and we're about to build it. Okay, now this is the very, very basics of getting into dwarf computers where we can build memory cells and adders and subtractors and things like that. Now that same mechanism can be hooked up to our magma gun as well and other kind of traps and automation of the fortress. So for this demonstration we're going to imagine that the right side is our fortress and the left side here is the open world. When the creature that we don't want to enter the fortress enters, they're going to trigger a pressure plate. Okay? And then both of these are going to close. But since the pressure plate is linked directly to the bridges, they're going to open after some time and that's not going to be useful to us. So we're going to automate this trap right here. So we're going to go to build, traps, and then pressure plate. Okay? And we're going to do creatures, creatures will trigger. Okay, and we're going to put that right there. Any mechanism is fine. If we were closer into the magma mist, I would say use a magma safe. Okay, obsidian bridge right there to seal them in, and then up this passageway. They're going to enter right here, and they're going to have to walk around and then back in this way to go down these stairs to get to the trap. So we're going to build a bridge somewhere in here. I don't know how long the army is. It's usually a couple squads. And I'm going to just overestimate it a little bit so that way we make sure to catch the whole army. Okay, so that's another bridge coming in. We're going to find another area of the fortress where we have mechanical power and a little bit of an open area. So this is the room right here that we're going to be using. And we're going to start building the toggle switch now. So build, machines and fluids, and a gear assembly. And we're going to keep placing after building and we're going to build one right here next to this one. Okay, and then we're going to go three spaces down and build one here, and build one here. Okay, build machines and fluids and horizontal axle. That's going to go north to south right here, connecting the top and bottom here and here. Smoothing and engraving, and then we're going to carve a track, and we're going to put it on these four tiles right here. Okay, so that's going to be carved. And then we want to build, construct wall, and we're going to put one wall right here. Any material is fine. Another wall right here. Excellent. So this is the basic layout of it right here. And now we're going to go to build machines and fluids and a lever. Okay, and we're going to put one lever right here. And another lever right here. Okay. And now we're going to go to build machines and fluids and we're going to build rollers okay so these rollers are going to be on the maximum of speed and they're going to be southward rollers and we're going to put them right here we're going to build a second set of rollers that are going to roll north and we're going to put them right here okay so now we're going to go to build traps and then pressure plate and we're going to set this to minecarts trigger and we're going to leave it at the lowest setting and we're going to put that right here okay excellent all this is built now and we're only using 88 power which is great so this is a kind of a low power design 5 10 15 20 i think that the rollers are like three the axles like three this lever right here we're going to link to the gear assembly that's right next to it so this one and this lever right here, we're going to link to the gear assembly that's right next to that. So this one. So we're going to pull both levers after they're linked. It's going to disengage this axle and it's going to disengage this axle here. Um, so this one and the roller are now independent. Excellent. Oh, there's a little animation there that shows it's disengaged. That's cool. So now this pressure plate right here that's activated on minecarts we're going to link that and we're going to link it to this bridge right here okay we're going to link it again to this bridge right here the very north bridge 
I want to link it to either the doors or the mechanisms of this trap. So that way when that is triggered, then the trap turns on. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to link it to the doors. However, I can't link it to the doors that a lever is also linked to. For the doors, they can only be linked to a lever or a pressure plate, not both. So we're going to destroy these doors right here and rebuild them and we're also going to destroy this lever right there and then when we rebuild the doors then we're going to link okay we're linking that plate to this door right here as well as this door right here and they're going to get into the area over here these walls right here are suspended right now so they can walk through them and then once everything's complete we're going to complete these walls so that way nothing can get into this mechanized area here okay okay we're gonna go to hauling and we're gonna add a new route and we're gonna rename this one sw1n switch one north and we're gonna put that track stop right on top of the rollers here in the north right there okay and we're gonna go into the conditions and remove all the conditions done and we're gonna assign a minecart that's not part of anything else we're gonna add another route and this one we're going to rename to be SW1S. So switch one south. And we're going to add a new minecart stop. And we're going to put that one right here that's between the pressure plate and the rollers in the south. Right there. So it's minecart, pressure plate, minecart, roller. Just like that. We're going to remove all the conditions from it. And we're going to assign a minecart that's not part of anything else. Excellent, just like this. So if I go to this pressure plate right here and show linked buildings, it's both bridges and both doors. Okay? So the way we're going to turn this on is we're going to go to this pressure plate right here and we're going to link that plate to the gear assembly here that's right next to the north minecart. Just right there. So this dwarf is about to run in here to smooth stone and he's going to trigger this pressure plate. That pressure plate is going to activate this gear assembly which is currently disengaged. So when we unpause the game here, he's going to walk in, activate the pressure plate. That's now active, okay? So it pulses on and now it's disengaged again. And that's the same premise that we're doing right here. Let's assume it's a goblin army and they trigger this pressure plate. What that's going to do is engage this gear assembly right here and move this minecart on the roller southward. Okay, it's going to slam into this cart and stay on this tile. All the momentum is going to go into this cart right here, which is going to slam into the wall. And then this minecart is going to be stuck on this pressure plate. Okay, so this second pressure plate right here is citizen activated, so that way we don't have to wait for an army to test this. Okay, so this one right here we're going to link to the exact same mechanism right here. We've been sending squads over to attack the goblins, but they haven't sent any sieges our way yet. And if they don't do it soon, then we're going to start a war with the humans. We're pulling the top lever here, and that's going to arm the system. Excellent. So that attached, and this gear assembly right here is still disengaged. The system is armed and ready to go. This lever right here, this is the reset lever, okay? Our test subject, Ming, is entering the trap, and she is going to walk across this pressure plate and activate the whole thing. But before she does, we have one final step. We need to forbid both of these carts right here. So all of this is forbidden, so that way when the carts are not at their track stop, the other dwarves don't come in and put them back where they're supposed to be. Okay, so these are all forbidden. When I unpause the game, they're going to step on the pressure plate, and this cart is going to go south. Slam into this cart. This cart takes all the momentum into this wall. And now this cart is resting on the pressure plate itself, holding it down. Okay? Now up here... The bridge is closed and the trap is enabled. Up at the top of the fortress, this bridge is also closed, so any kind of stragglers of the army are going to be sealed into this room, and the only way they can really go is down here and into the trap. So in order to reset the trap, we're going to pull this lever in the south, 
that's going to engage this gear assembly and turn on this roller. This minecart is going to be propelled north, slamming into this one. Okay, and then like a Newton's Cradle, this one takes all the energy and the system is now reset. However, we have to throw this lever one more time to completely disengage it. Instead of a manual reset, we can make a 30-day reset clock just like this. We have a track that goes in a loop, track stop at the fullest resistance, a pressure plate that would be attached to this gear assembly right here, and then we would set the condition of this we would remove everything except for this one right here. Um, push off north. Maybe every 30 days. Maybe we could bump it up to every 60 days. Just like this. And then we would add a minecart to that. And then the minecart right here is going to be pushed north every 60 days. Triggering this pressure plate. Which would trigger this gear assembly resetting the system. Okay. Now this is the very very basics of getting into dwarf computers where we can build memory cells and adders and subtractors and things like that so this trap has been successfully automated and now that i know everything works we can remove this test pressure plate thank you very much for watching and subscribe for more videos